Last year, 150 Tamils made a daring bid for freedom. They left the southern port of Matara in small fishing boats like this, bound for Australia. But their journey ended in chains. A Sri Lankan naval patrol spotted the men in Sri Lankan waters. They were taken back to Matara and thrown in jail. Now they're being taken to court to face charges of illegal migration. But many, like Krasant Patmanathan, are already planning their next escape. This is the catch-22 for young ethnic Tamils. They face suspicion of involvement in the civil war, so it's dangerous to stay in Sri Lanka, but it's dangerous to leave. Hundreds of relatives have come to the court, including Patmanathan's mother, Nessa Mella. There is no money, no have lunch, no food, no rest, everything, nothing. She's from Australia, take money. They tell stories of daily harassment from a government and military dominated by ethnic Sinhalese. Not Turkey, Sri Lanka. Not Turkey, Sri Lanka. Inside the court, the proceedings are held in Sinhala, Sri Lanka's official language. The Tamil prisoners barely understand a word of it, and there's no translation. It's only when they're led back to the bus that they realise the judge has granted bail. Their relatives must now scramble to find $3,000 to release each man, a sum many simply can't afford. There's a lot of talk about whether they're fleeing persecution or are simply economic migrants. But the reality is that for these people, it's one and the same. The war has destroyed their livelihood, their sense of safety, any hope they had of a decent life for their families. And no matter what laws are passed in Australia or what politicians say in Canberra, Australia will remain the beacon. These Tamil people cannot stay here. That he go to pay money, then he go to Australia, want to save the human. But Australia says if people come by boat, they will be sent back to Sri Lanka. Because there is no any uh, government help to go uh, by the flight. That's why they uh, went through the uh, went by the boat. boat. By nightfall, Nessa Mella has found someone to guarantee the bail bond to get her son released. She hugs him for the first time in two months. Do you still want to go to Australia? <laughs> yeah, I like it. That's it. I, again, maybe. Mm -hmm. On a boat? Yeah, I can't tell anything. That's it. But not everyone was celebrating. More than 30 were denied bail on suspicion of being Tamil fighters. Tamils have been fighting for a separate homeland since 1983. The Tamil Tigers, or LTTE, was both a liberation army and a terrorist group using child soldiers and suicide bombers. Many Tamils supported their goals, even if they deplored their methods. Last year, the Sri Lankan army wiped them out in a bloodbath that shocked the world. A population of some 300,000 people, plus the Tamil Tiger forces, were caught in an area about the size of Central Park in New York City. They were within range of all the armaments that were being used to smash the Tamil Tiger lines. 
Gordon Weiss was the UN spokesman in Sri Lanka for the past three years. He resigned in December to return to Australia and can now speak openly for the first time. A lot of civilians died inside the siege zone. I have heard anything between 10 and 40,000 people and that's from, that's from reliable sources who had a presence inside the zone. So up to 40,000 civilians could have been killed in those last battles. That's right. That's a shocking figure. Yeah, it's a terrible figure. What's more, he says the Sri Lankan government knowingly misled the international community about what was really going on. They repeated a number of things that were either intentionally misleading or were lies. One senior government civil servant remarked at the end of the war that the government insistence that the figures were very low was a ploy. It was a ploy to, uh, to uh, allow the government to, to get on with its business. That business was finishing off once and for all one of the world's most ruthless guerrilla movements. The Tigers had little compassion for civilians, using them as human shields. We have pretty good testimony that the uh, Tamil Tigers were killing people consistently to stop them from getting out. Foreign correspondent has obtained photos taken in the last days of fighting that show how unarmed men, women and children bore the brunt of the attacks. If one looks at the numbers of civilians who died during this uh, time, I think it speaks for itself that not enough care was shown uh, in order to preserve the lives of the lives of the innocent. Do you think senior government officials, even President Roger Paksa himself, should be investigated for war crimes? Well, I think, as is the case with, with, uh, with uh, war crimes, it's a question of the chain of command and where the buck finally stopped. To most Sinhalese, the army's victory was a triumph over almost three decades of terrorism. And the man who ordered the campaign has become a national hero. President Mahinda Rajapaksa was comfortably re-elected two weeks ago after taking full credit for defeating the Tiger Army of the LTTE. He denies that civilians were targeted or that Tamils are now fleeing from reprisals. So we are from Australian television. Yeah. There is much concern about Tamils coming to Australia in boats. Will that problem be solved? Yes, now I think it is solved. Most of the problems. Because it was organized by the LTT. Because that was the way of, you know, they were they were they were drug drug dealers and drug trafficking, drug arms and smuggling, human arms. But the asylum seekers tell a different story. We caught up with the mother and son we'd met at prison back at their rented home in Batakalo in the northeast. They had to sell their house and land to raise $20,000 for the people smugglers. He's got no beard. No beard, where to go? <laughs> Pat Manarton told me he had taken the boat to avoid being killed. Now, we are go to the in 1992, as the civil war raged around them, his father was abducted and murdered. Four years ago, his uncle disappeared. Last year, while running a small photocopying business, he says anonymous phone callers told him he would be next. And the Kadai Lerigola, but he's a miracle. 
நல்ல ஏற்கனவும் இல்லாம போயிட்டார் நீ அப்படி ஒரு இது சித்தப்பாவும் இல்லாம போயிட்டார் நீ அப்படி ஒரு இது நடக்கப்படான்றதுக்காக தான் The shop provides barely enough income for the family to eat. As the only breadwinner, he felt a responsibility to try to find work in Australia. Despite the family's history of persecution, he saw no point in applying for a visa from the Australian High Commission. Anna Sanji adi reject aagapattadi. Kolombu ki interview ke ellam poi niraya kaasi ponadi. Andha idile andha sandeyam சந்தேகத்தால நாங்க ரை பண்ணல அண்ணா ரை பண்ணி ஒரு கிடைக்கல அண்ணா சுவிஸ் எம்பசிக்கு ரை பண்ணவர் அது கிடைக்கல அந்த அந்த பீலிங்ல நாங்க விட்டுட்டோம் There has been a lot of uh, changes to the immigration law in Australia and a lot of debate in our parliament about migration were you aware of any of this ah oh. ஆஸ்திரேலியாஸ்திரேலியாஸ்திரேலியாஸ்திரேலியாஸ்திரேலியாஸ்திரேலியாஸ்திரேலியாஸ்திரேலியாஸ்திரேலியாஸ்திரே
the uh, extreme Buddhist nationalism in Sri Lanka holds that uh, Sri Lanka has always uh, been dominated by the Sinhalese and the, by the Buddhists, uh, you know, for as long as recorded history. They exclude totally the claims of the Tamils or the Muslims or, or uh, any other segment of society to, to any sort of any sort of role in government which would uh, which would uh, threaten, as they see it, the uh, the Sinhalese uh, hegemony there. At any public event, President Rajapaksa is shadowed by senior monks. Many urged him publicly to crush the Hindu tigers. The Rajapaksa administration is seen as being closely tied to Sinhalese nationalism and to Buddhism. And I don't think that the administration feels inclined to deliver any serious reconciliation for the uh, Tamil community in Sri Lanka, but we'll have to wait and see. So far, the president's rule has seen increased authoritarianism. Not just against Tamils, but against his Sinhalese critics too. An armed guard is now an essential companion for any independent newspaper. Frederica Jans is editor of The Sunday Leader, one of the few newspapers still critical of the president. It's a dangerous business. Horrible, those scenes at the hospital when we were there. She was promoted last year after her predecessor, La Santa Wickramatunga, was murdered. I hold the current government, the Rajapaksa government, completely responsible. Whether they initiate the attacks, I don't know. We have no proof. Whether they killed La Santa, I don't know. Again, we have no proof. However, the fact that La Santa's investigation has gone nowhere uh, is proof, I believe, that his killers are close or are known to the highest authority in this land. Wickramatunga was only one of dozens of journalists to be killed, beaten or abducted since Rajapaksa came to power. Not a single case has been solved. We have continued to be threatened and harassed. We have continued to receive death threats, both myself and my news editor and editor of the investigations desk, all women. The reality is that there is very little press freedom practiced in this country. Uh, most of the press has been covered or into submission. They're too afraid to be free anymore or to, to write without any kind of self-censorship. The president's unbridled power was on display just a few days ago at Sri Lanka's annual celebration of independence. But in recent months, more evidence has emerged of army atrocities in last year's offensive. This mobile phone footage, smuggled out of the country, shows Sinhalese soldiers executing prisoners. The government simply dismissed it as a fabrication, even after a UN investigation authenticated the video. The government reacted in its uh, typical fashion with uh, hysterical denunciations. This is what happens in, in war. It's not a surprise. But it, uh, it was in line with the very consistent government denials that anything was ever wrong inside the war zone. <laughs> Thanks to the support of countries like China, Rajapaksa has escaped censure from the United Nations. The Security Council ignored reports from its own officials of massive civilian casualties. The UN Human Rights Council even praised Sri Lanka's actions. Personally, I think that was a disgrace, especially when it's stacked up alongside the 12 or 13 resolutions condemning the uh, Israeli invasion of Gaza that was going on at the same time. 
One man who could tell all is the former army chief, General Sarat Fonseca, who commanded the offensive. He stood against the president in last month's election after he was demoted to a ceremonial position. Yesterday, the general offered to give evidence to any war crimes inquiry. Within hours, he was arrested and charged with unspecified military offences. Civilians who survived the offensive have continued to suffer. Up to 290,000 people were interned in camps so the government could search for Tamil fighters. The first month that people were in those camps, so the conditions were, were truly terrible. Uh, you know, the first six weeks when it was really critical to reach people to ensure that uh, unnecessary numbers of people weren't dying as a result of lack of care, uh, there was not sufficient access to those camps. Journalists have not been allowed to investigate conditions. But on election day, we were allowed a brief visit to one of the most developed camps. Eight months on, tarpaulins and disease-ridden tents have been replaced by semi-permanent dwellings. Under international pressure, the government had agreed to empty the camps by now, but tens of thousands of people remain, simply because they have nowhere else to go. Either the military has sealed off their villages, or their homes have been destroyed. <laughs> For many Tamils, the events of the past year have destroyed any reason for staying in Sri Lanka. Patmanathan goes back to court later this month to face fines or further jail. But when it's over, he plans to leave. Police have already branded him a traitor. I <laughs> Sri Lanka and Australia are relying on their navies to stop the boats. Their success will determine how many reach Australia. But one thing is sure. Unless the situation for Tamils inside Sri Lanka changes, the boats will keep on coming.